Hey everyone, my name is Navid, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build Devise into your Rails 7 application from top to bottom. So we're going to be going through a brand new Rails application, and I'm going to show you exactly how I would set up Devise. Now, really quickly, I have these notes that I'm going to be referring to just for our nav bar, the flash alerts, and some modifications we'll make to our Devise initializer. And I'll provide that to you in the notes, and that's just going to make this really easy and go very quickly. All right, so let's get started. I just want to open up my terminal. And from here, I'm going to change my directory to point at the desktop. I also want to use Ruby 3.1. So now my Ruby version is set. I'm pointing at the desktop. And now I can create my new Rails application. I'll call it devise from scratch. So this is my device from scratch demo application, and we're going to set it up with ES build bootstrap and our database is going to be Postgres. All right. So all together, when you're creating your rails app, it should look something like this. Okay, so now our Rails application is being kicked off. We see this new directory created on the desktop. Now a bundle install is running and also Yarn is being set up as well. So we just need to wait and let this finish out. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and drag and drop our Rails application into our text editor. Now what I'm going to do is open up a new terminal and from here, I'm going to run Rails DB setup, and that's going to create our databases locally for this application. Now I want to create a home page, and I'll do that by typing Rails G controller main to create a main controller with an with one action called home. Awesome. And then I'll go into app. I'm sorry, I'll go into config and then routes.rb, and then we can make that home page the root of our application. Now I can run my Rails application by typing this line. And when I press enter, I can now open up a text editor and visit localhost 3000. Okay, so here we have our home page and I'm just going to get set up very quickly. And in our terminal, we're getting a 200 and everything looks good. Now I want to start building out device into my rails application. And so now that we have this just basic, uh, rails template running, we can get started. Now let's go into our gem file. And anywhere in the gem file, we want to add device. Let's press save. Let's open up a new shell. And then I'm going to run bundle. And this is going to install the new device gem that I defined in my gem file. And now I can clear the command line and run rails G device install. Awesome. Now device has been bootstrapped to our application. And just to note really quickly, every time you run a bundle install, you're going to want to restart the rail server and you're going to see that we'll get an error. So I'm going to go through these steps and then you'll notice that once we try to restart our app, it's going to fail. And that's because after installing a new gem, we just need to restart our rail server. So let's just go ahead and move forward. We've already done step two. We can grab this line right here in step one and move to our config and really anywhere in development.rb within the config block, you can paste that line in. And that's just setting up your email locally. Right now, we're not going to be working with email, but when you go to production, you're going to want to set up some type of send grid or a way for emails to flow out of your application. All right. So step one's done. Step two is finished because we've already created a home page. And later on, we're going to add step three, so we can just move right along to step four, and that's creating the templates for our sign in and sign up pages. So once I run rails G colon or rails G device views, 
I'm going to get a nice directory in my app views called device. And this is going to have all of my templates for logging in, for signing up. So it's very simple uh, just to get the HTML stood up and all of your templates going for your flows. Now let's clear the command line. And at this point, we've done everything we need to do to set up device, except for creating a new user model. So I'm going to type rails generate device user. And this is going to create a user model in my rails application. So I'm going to go over to database and just check this out. And if we go to our migration, we notice that we have this really nice migration that's already set up for us by device. And I didn't do a lot of work to get all of this set up to get this table defined. Okay. Now let's run rails DB migrate. And now we have a user table in our database and we are ready to persist data. Let's close out of here and let's close out of here and let's clear the command line. And let's go back to our Rails application and refresh. And notice we get that error I was talking about. So we can go to the terminal and kill the Rails server by typing in Control C. And then we can press up on the keyboard and then enter to restart the Rails server. Now when I refresh, everything's looking good again. And now what I want to do is add a nav bar with all of the login and sign up buttons and links. So I'm going to go over to my app and then I'm going to go over to views layouts, and then I'm going to add a nav bar partial. And then we're going to paste this partial into our application.html.erb. And we can just type something simple like nav bar and refresh. And now we see we have this nav bar at the top. So now is a good time for us to reference our notes. So I'm going to switch over and grab this block for our nav bar. And then I'm going to paste that here and I'm getting all of this markup from bootstrap. And now if I refresh, I have this really clean nav bar that has my sign up and my sign in links working and also the home page link is working as well. Another thing that I can do is go to application.html.erb and I can add a container fluid around the yield and that will make everything nice and flush. The next thing I want to do is go to back to my notes and I want to grab these alerts and I want to paste those alerts right underneath the nav bar. And you can create a partial for these alerts, but for now, I'm just going to paste it right in here. And now, um, when I try to sign in or sign up, those alert messages are going to pop up as a banner. And really, in order for device to work, we have to set it up to work with Hotwire. So there's one last step, and this is kind of the trickiest part, is you have to add this implementation here. So we're going to copy this first block and then switch over to our config initializers device.rb and at the top of the file before the config block we're going to paste that controller in and then we can go back and grab this line and then we're going to go down and you can paste that sort of towards the middle of that config block and then at the very end we want to take this last line to set up the warden and if you go over at the very bottom, you'll see that there's some commented out code already that mentions this right here. So this is probably the right place that we want to paste that. And it looks like we can save and we're ready to go. But the last thing we have to do is restart our Rails application because we made a change to an initializer. Now an initializer spins up every single time our Rails application starts. So if we modify our, our initializer, we're gonna have to restart our Rails application in order for it to be up to date with our changes. So let's type in Control C and then press up and enter. 
let's refresh our Rails application and we're getting no errors still. And let's actually sign up a user. Awesome, so now I've signed in. I have this wonderful banner at the top. I can edit my account. And if I go over to my terminal, I can type in Rails console. And if I type user.all, I can see that this record was persisted. All right, everyone, so that's the end of the lesson. I hope you took something away from this, but the really nice part about devise is that you can put a lot of great conditional logic into your templates and into your controllers. So for example, I could go over to my views, to my main and to my home, and I could say, if the current user is logged in, say, hello, current user dot email. And you don't have to put an else, you could just end that. And just this simple markup allows me to know whether or not a user is signed in or not. So when I sign in, I can see that message on the home page. And when I sign out, it's not there. All right, so that's the great part about Devise. It's a quick and simple authentication system that's really efficient and effective and a great tool or a, a great a solution to have production ready authentication ready to go um, just right out of the box. All right, so that's my lesson on Devise. I hope it was helpful and I hope that this can really speed up your development. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next lesson.